Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. We have another episode on the Little Little Wood Shop today. Of course, I'm Steve. And uh, on this Sunday, we thought we would take and I would join a, uh, I join a video to a blog that I'm currently doing. Uh, it's entitled CNC Engraving Spalted Wood, Spalted Material. Uh, first of all, what is spalted wood? Uh, spalted wood is any wood that gets discoloration in it from fungal spores during a rotting process. Okay? Please do not ask me to name all the different fungal spores because that is for a biologist, which I most certainly am not. Okay. Now, how does wood spalting happen? Got, I got my script here, so we can try to, try to stay on track. Uh, how it happens is it's never an action that takes place in a live healthy tree. It's generally one that's hit the ground. It's half rotten. It's half dead. Spores, fungal spores set in, and the next thing you know, they're literally eating the tree from the inside out. Now, you've, you've got to catch them before the wood goes too rotten or it's useless, okay? Where do I get spalted material? Well, there's a few different ways you can get spalted material. I do all mine by foraging. I, uh, I go out and I, I go into the woods. Uh, I make sure that wherever I'm foraging, if it's in a, in a forest that may require a permit because it's on state land, please make that call, look into that. If it's on a private property owner's, go knock on the door, and if you explain to them what you're looking to do, and you're looking at grabbing a few rotten, half-rotted logs off the ground, chances are nobody is going to get upset and tell you no, okay? If you're looking to go out and cut burls down uh, out of live trees while well, you're having a different conversation, that's for another video anyways. But for the most part, if it's not your own land, get landowner permission, or if you need to file a permit, guess what? What, what few dollars you're going to spend on that permit will probably be far less than a fine for not, not getting one at all, okay? Now, the other way you can do it is you can buy spalted material. Now, my, my first word of advice there is, uh, no, uh, there is a lot of beautiful stuff out there. There are a lot of guys who forage, find it, mill it, have it all prepped and ready for you. You are going to pay for this stuff. This is not easy material to locate unless you go out and get it. Uh, you're going to pay somebody for their time. And the cost that I have found on, on, a, on a board of material it is generally five to ten times the cost if you would go down to a, a lumber yard and buy it. it. Per board foot, this stuff is expensive. It is gorgeous, but it is expensive. Uh, and the other way you can get it is you can spalt your own material. We'll get into that, that conversation here in just a minute. Okay? Now, what conditions are ideal for spalting your material? Well, everything that I've noticed, uh, temperatures, 70 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and your material has to have an interior moisture of at least 30%. Okay? I found that in the summer where I live, I live in northern New Hampshire, we have long winters, we have cold springs, we have chilly falls, you're not seeing 70 to 90 degrees, but for a very small time period, okay? And states with warmer climates, obviously, are going to have better conditions. Now, the better of those conditions will lead us to our next topic, how long does it take spalt, the spalting process to take place? Where I am, oh God, it's years. Uh, if you're outside foraging on a log or looking for logs to take to a miller to get milled for, for, for board, boards or planks or whatever, the process Mother Nature does up here is in years because of our frozen cold winters. The fungal spores are inactive or they're killed off when the, when the temperatures drop severely like below zero, okay? Warmer areas, what may take me three, four, five years for spalting to take place. Uh, in other areas, maybe Virginia, the Carolinas, things like that, uh, spalting may be half that, a third of that time, 
Okay. The other way to expedite that is, which will leave us uh, to our next little topic, is can I spalt my own material? The answer to that is yes. You can buy spores, you can buy fungus spores, uh, and what I've read, you can control the climate. Uh, you can put your wood and, and, and whatever it is, maybe you've got a, a, a block that you want to put on a, you, maybe you're a wood turner, you, you make bowls and stuff. I, I cannot give you any, anything on that. I'm not a wood turner, I'm, a, I'm an engraver, okay? This stuff, though, can be put inside containers. You can inoculate it with your spore. You can add water, rotten leaves and whatnot to... To me, it sounds like a glorified worm bin, but hey, whatever. Uh, if that's something you choose to do, I've never done it. I prefer to go out and forage for it. Uh, and like I said, we'll, hopefully we'll do another video on that down the road. Okay. Now, ultimately, what do we use the material for? That would be probably the whole point of this video. Spalted material. Okay. Like we said earlier, our four big species, birch, maple, beech, poplar. This, right here, is a piece of sugar maple that came from a local mill yard where I'm at. You can see this beautiful piece of green spalt in it. Normally, I would have killed to have been able to use this in something. However, this is what happens when the cores of the log go beyond the spalting process, they go beyond being punky, and now they're just flat out rotten. Uh, this one's got a big trough out of it, okay? Uh, a couple simple tools that we use uh, up here. Get yourself a, a shoe brush, something with a decent bristle, and you can, you can scrape out all the dead old excess, okay? Get that out of there. I will probably end up using this piece now in a, in, a, in a table or a piece of furniture. We can put something on the bottom because there is a hole straight through it. Uh, we can backfill this with stone and we can pour a, some type of clear liquid poly or epoxy resin in it to give it like a bar top appearance with colored stone or, or something like that in there. There is still spalting around it, okay, but unfortunately the piece is too far gone to engrave anything in, okay? Now, here is a piece of spalted poplar, okay? You are going to notice the black lines, uh, the white rot. This is particularly common, I have found in poplar. Uh, in this particular design, I use exclusively, whenever I have it, I use this in my fireman's plaques. This looks like fire damaged fire scorn wood. Uh, it is very appropriate for any of the firefighters out there. Uh, I've used this in some of the recognition firemen of the year plaques for the gentleman up here in my own hometown. Uh, it goes over well. They, they are beautiful. I, I just cannot emphasize how beautiful they are. Now, <laughs> timing, timing, timing on this is crucial. You get it too early, you pull your logs out too early, you mill it, well, guess what? You may not have nice effects in it. Well, that's the chance you take. You wait too long, the next thing you know, you're, the center is, is a bird bath and it's too rotted through and you can't use it. Sometimes you'll find them just in between the middle, okay? And when I do that, uh, what I'll do to, to harden them up, and we've got a can right here, Minwax puts out a product called Wood Hardener. I know there are other things out there on the market. I, I'm able to get this. Minwax has been a, a reputable brand. It's been around for years. People like it. Some hate it. Okay, I'm, I'm not here to, to get into that argument today. Uh, this is just a wood hardener. Uh, you brush this stuff on. Uh, one note to the user. Please, please, please make sure you're using proper ventilation with this stuff. Because, yeah, lightheaded, no, you are going to be higher than a Georgia pine if you, you don't wear proper respiration or, or, or protection and, and have good ventilation. This, this is going to make you stupid, okay? So, yeah. Put it on, you let it dry overnight. Basically, what it, to me, it's just, uh, it's a, it smells almost like an MEK 
something along that line. Uh, and it's got glues and, and some type of poly in it. When the MEK evaporates, that stuff is like fiberglass. It stiffens the fibers of the material. I've never tried to personally engrave over it. Uh, I've only used it for stiffening up, up certain spots. If this stuff is too punky, don't waste your time trying to engrave it. Uh, if your bits, your V-bits especially, will go okay with the grain. Uh, here's a plaque, as a matter of fact. You, you probably won't see the engraving too well. It hasn't been painted yet. It just came off the table last week. This is a production prayer plaque. We've got our, our axes. We've got a nice border. And you can see all the blacks and grays and browns. This looks like a fire damaged piece of wood, and it's not. This is just a piece of spalted poplar. Uh, what we do is we, uh, we cut off our live edge, and we, we, glue up, we glue up square blanks like this, run them through our planer. You get the idea, okay? But in this, uh, our Maltese cross, our axes, and our prayer. With all the spalting, these are gorgeous. When this gets hit with a high gloss lacquer, to go in someone's home, to either put on a plate holder, to, to put on a hearth, or maybe we can put a hanger on it, whatever you want. We put these up on the wall. These are gorgeous. They, they really are beautiful. Uh, we actually have pictures of some firemen, uh, firemen of the Year Award plaques. Uh, for anybody interested in looking at what they do look like finished, uh, our website, the littlelittlewoodshop.com, you can find us there. Uh, we just wanted to share a little bit about spalting with you. I enjoy it. Uh, and if you're a fellow woodshop owner and you're thinking about getting into using some of this stuff, uh, the one thing I can say is if you, you got a little one, take your little one out in the, out in the woods with you. It's going to be a big, big day of excitement for them. You're going to go out foraging high-end expensive material. Bring your little one along with you. You'll have a blast, okay? Uh, well, from us here at the Little Little Woodshop, thank you for taking the time again to watch me. and. Uh, I hope to have you guys another video up here very shortly, and uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you like what you see, hey, please subscribe, uh, hit a like button, check us out on social media, uh, we're covered across all the big ones, and uh, we'll catch you later. Thanks again, guys.